Political generals are an often discussed but little understood aspect of Civil War history. They were, as their name suggests, politically well-connected individuals who were appointed to positions of military responsibility. That's not to say that professional military men were not politically well-connected and did not have political aspects to their job. They did, but they were appointed because of their military abilities. Political generals were appointed because they were politically well-connected. Political generals existed for several reasons. First, during the Civil War, both North and South were forced to raise massive armies. Then there were only a limited number of experienced officers in both the North and the South. Politicians, even if they did not have military experience, had certain valuable skills. They were experienced at communicating with people. They were experienced at getting people to do things. Many of them had administrative experience if they'd served as governors uh, or had served in cabinets or in other administrative government positions. So they had certain valuable skills that made them useful militarily, but the main reason was they were politically well-connected. Both President Abraham Lincoln and President Jefferson Davis needed to build and keep together political coalitions to support their policies. Lincoln was especially adept at this, appointing as many as a hundred political figures to military posts. Many of Lincoln's appointees were what were known as war Democrats, members of the opposition Democratic Party who supported the Union war effort. Lincoln appointed them because they were able to convince Democrats to support the Union cause. Other political generals in the Union Army were important immigrant figures, such as General Karl Schurz of Germany. Schurz was a political revolutionary who fled Germany after the failed 1848 revolutions. He was an important figure in the Republican Party and a popular figure in the German immigrant community. He was able to convince many German immigrants to support the Union cause and join the Union Army. In fact, many of the political generals' most valuable contribution to the war effort on both sides was in recruiting soldiers to fill the ranks. Another famous political general, perhaps the most notorious, was Benjamin Butler of Massachusetts. Butler was the quintessential political op opportunist. Before the war, as late as 1860, he supported pro-slavery Democrats from the South. Very quickly in 1861, however, he not only became a Unionist, he became a radical anti-slavery Unionist. In Maryland, he occupied Baltimore, securing the rail connection between Washington, D.C. and the rest of the North. In Virginia, he initiated the policy of accepting runaway slaves into Union lines as so-called contraband of war. Not all political generals were from the North. Jefferson Davis made use of them as well. One of the most well-known was John C. Breckinridge of Kentucky. Before the war, Breckinridge was the vice president of President James Buchanan. He ran as the nominee of the Southern Democrats in 1860. Then, even though Kentucky remained in the Union, he supported the Confederate cause. Early in the war, he served out west under Braxton Bragg. He was criticized for his performance at Stones River and at Missionary Ridge. He was transferred back east. He led a victorious southern army at the Battle of New Market, defeating a larger Union force commanded by another political general, Franz Siegel. Another important political general was John B. Floyd. Floyd was one of the worst political generals on either side in the Civil War. Floyd commanded the southern army at the Battle of Fort Donelson, one of the greatest disasters for the South in the entire war. Not only did Floyd lose one of the most important strategic points in the South, he fled and allowed his army to be captured without him. The opposite of Floyd was probably John Logan, who was widely considered the best political general on either side during the Civil War. He served under Grant and Sherman out west. He was wounded at the Battle of Fort Donelson. He commanded troops in the Vicksburg Campaign and the Atlantic Campaign. He was known as Black Jack, John Logan by his men, with whom he was very popular. In fact, many political generals were popular amongst their men. Many volunteer soldiers resented West Pointers who they saw as elitists. So next time you hear about political generals, don't be so quick to dismiss them. Even though many believe they were incompetent, appointed to posts they were incapable of holding, the story is actually more complex. They served important functions on both sides.